What's going on my friends? I am Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U. Today we're gonna to talk about split bus panels. So, what is a split bus panel? A split bus panel is an electrical panel board that has two different sections on it and one of them is fed from the other one. So we have an example right here where I have uh, lugs at the top. That's where we would bring our feeders or our service entrance conductors in if this is a service panel. And then this top portion of this panel, uh, this top busing would become energized. And then we have a big breaker here with some conductors that go down and connect to a lower bus section. So it is a split bus panel. Now, uh, you're not going to see very many of these. This was done away with a long time ago, but where this came from is back in like, I don't know, like 40s, 50s, up to probably the 70s and 80s. There were manufacturing these kind of panels. And what was going on is back then there was not a lot of electrical demands in houses. We didn't have all these crazy electronics and huge, you know, electric furnaces and appliances and stuff like that. So running power to homes, you could actually get away with just having 60 amps run to almost every house. And then as we start to develop technology and things get, you know, houses get bigger and more uh, beefier appliances go into houses, we have this need to kind of upgrade and get into the 100 amp, 125 amp zone for services. So rather than going and upgrading your service and getting these brand new 100 amp breakers that nobody had really seen up until that point, I mean, people had seen them, it's just, it was uncommon to put in a 100 amp breakers in houses. So it was like this huge expensive thing. And the busing, the bus bars in a 100 amp enclosure too, it was just more metal, it was a more expensive thing. And we're talking about during the era of like post-World War II, Korean War, Vietnam, you know, you've got all of these things that are affecting copper prices. We have like post depression world too. So like our, the entire country is kind of like rebuilding itself every decade through all of this. So saving money is of really big importance, especially once you have all these wars and then you go through um, metal uh, shortages. So we would have prices of copper and aluminum go like crazy through the roof. Um, and we've talked in other videos about Federal Pacific and a lot of the problems with that and Zinsco and things because of the copper shortages over time, manufacturers would start to change and adapt. And they're like, I wonder if we can just use steel or <laughs> I wonder if we can use aluminum or something else. And so you see people trying to get around things and figure out different ways because of the time that our country went through for all of those decades. So it's kind of understandable, but also it wasn't just the manufacturers, it was the consumers too. It's like, how can I get away with paying less? Do I really need to go get one of those fancy new panels, the whole 100 amp breakers and 100 amp panel and everything? Well, no, these things were around. So what's cool about this is rather than feeding in your service entrance conductors or your feeders, if you wanted to feed like, I don't know, 125 amps into this thing, well, you could subdivide that 125 amps out and you don't have to have anything more than a 60 amp breaker. You don't have to have like a big 125 amp breaker in here for these old panels. It was like, all right, well, if we just subdivide that, if no breaker is bigger than 60 amps, we can still utilize that and we just keep everything that's like plugs and, and light switches and everything that's in this lower bus. And then we've got this other bus up here that we can use for 220s and things like that. So a lot of these panels only had space for 220 breakers. Like this one right here, I can't actually put anything in this top section of bus. There's nothing to snap into it. But you have all of these down here, they're set up for individual single pole uh, breakers. Now this specific bus setup on this panel actually has spots for single pole breakers. So another problem was people started using single pole breakers up in that top section when you were only supposed to use two pole. So it would allow, allow for more current to flow on that bus and that bus was really only designed for a certain amount of current to go through. So it just wear it over time um, and you know create more hazards than anything. There's not a problem of houses like burning down because of this. There's a lot of different misinformation out there about the whole split bus thing. There's even currently still split bus panels being manufactured, but they're manufactured for different reasons. There's a lot of like large switch gear and enclosures and motor control uh, enclosures and things like that that have multiple different bus setups in them. There are panels that are specifically made so that one section 
or one busing is set up for typical use. And then there's a second bus setup that's utilized for generator hookup. So if you have like a utility failure or something like that, they're set up for use in generators and they're still called split bus panels. So is it illegal to use them? No, it's not. The nature of something being a split bus panel does not make it illegal. What makes it illegal is the number of handles that it takes for you to kill that panel. And the real reason for this is that, so imagine you have a, a huge fire that happens and you're at like some big property. Well, can you imagine a firefighter having to run around like building to building and go and disconnect every single one of these suites and it takes you like 30 minutes just to kill all the power? Or even if you just have one massive enclosure and rather than there being a singular switch to kill that whole panel, you've got to turn every single one of these things off, not knowing what any of the loads are or anything. So it just kind of became ridiculous. And uh, especially once we had people start utilizing single pole breakers up on the top portion of these panels and then, you know, creating like excess heating and burning out and things like that, um, it, it was all done away with. So let's look in code really quick and just see what it talks about for split bus to figure out if split bus is really that bad or if there's really a problem or anything. The reason I'm bringing two code books out is because this very thing was changed in code. So a lot of people will see that the whole split bus exception was taken out. So they think that there's no longer a rule for split bus. So let's get into it. Let's look right now at the most current code. We've got uh, the 2020 National Electric Code. We're going to go to Article 408.36, overcurrent protection. So I'm going to go to that in the 2020. And then I'm going to go over to my 2017 for the last code cycle. Those of you that don't know, fun fact. The National Electric Code is recreated every three years. So every three years we have to sit and like try to figure out what all of these old geezers working for all these manufacturing people have changed on us. And it's irritating. <laughs> it's so irritating. At least it's not every year though, right? Like at least, you know, it's every three years. Now, if you compare the uh, 2017 to the 2020, there's a little portion that's missing that was taken out and it reads uh, 408.36. This is the 2017 version, the old code. Exception number one, individual protection shall not be required for a panel board used as service equipment with multiple disconnecting means in accordance with 230.71. In panel boards protected by three or more main circuit breakers or sets of fuses, the circuit breakers or sets of fuses shall not supply a second bus structure within the same panel board assembly. So it's very clear right there. Can't have something that, that uh, a main disconnecting means that feeds another bus structure. Now, if you go over to 2020 and you look, it's like, oh, they took that out. That exception's not there. There still is an exception number one, but they've taken that exception number one out, completely deleted it, changed number two to number one, reworded some things on it. So a lot of people are like, okay, so they just took that out. So that means like, it's not illegal to have split bus panels, right? Cause that doesn't say anything in 2020. If you sit here and read 36, you know, it talks about there being, uh, individual branch protection for two main circuit breakers, two sets of fuses in other than service equipment. So it just has nothing to do with service equipment. Um, 42 overcurrent protection devices, 42 it's in this side too. So like just doesn't mention it anymore. Kind of weird, right? Well, it's not until you move back in code a little bit to another portion of code. And the NEC loves to do this. How this reads is stupid. The fact that you have to like try to find information and it's so obscure and all over the place. This, this needs somebody who works for Apple to design it. It needs somebody that's like, dude, quit with all this bullshit. Like if you want us to know the code, if you want us to learn code and actually know it and be able to apply it and do good installs for everybody to be able to, make it much better like holy crap this is such a crazy manual that it takes so long to get used to and it's just this little it's just this little book and it's worked on every three years by a whole bunch of people anyways that's my rant okay 230.71 so as i was saying before i rapidly digressed um the 408 
0.36 portion that's missing, you need to reference 230.71 where we talk about this whole six handle rule. The six handle rule is different in these as well. If you look at the 2017 code, 230.71 uh, max number of disconnects, there is uh, an A and a B just like there is over on the 2020 code in A and a B, but both of them are different. So uh, A before used to say the service disconnecting means for each service permitted by 230.2 for each set of service entrance conductors permitted by 230.40 Exception one, three, four, or five shall consist of not more than six switches or sets of circuit breakers or combination of not more than six switches and sets of circuit breakers mounted in a single enclosure. It was allowing it in a single enclosure back then. So that's the part, they took that whole thing completely out. Uh, B said single pole units, two or three single pole switches or breakers capable of individual operation shall be permitted on multi-wire circuits, one pole for each ungrounded conductor as multi-pole disconnect, provided they are equipped with identified handle ties, master handle to disconnect all conductors of the service with no more than six operations of the hand. So that's where this whole six handle thing came from. So you can see they very, they very much allowed for a single enclosure uh, six handle kind of thing. Now thing that's it's cleared up um, 230.70 in the 2020 code says each service shall have only one disconnecting means unless the requirements of 230.71 B are met and in B it's the it's titled the two to six service disconnecting means uh, section and it says two to six Service disconnects shall be permitted for each service permitted by 230.2 or for each set of service entrance conductors permitted by 230.40. Exception number one, three, four, and five. The two to six service disconnecting means shall be permitted to consist of a combination of any of the following. Separate enclosures, number one, <laughs> this is where they're making the delineation. Separate enclosures with a main service disconnecting means in each enclosure. Number two, panel boards with a main service disconnecting means in each panel board enclosure. Number three, switch boards where there is only one service disconnect in each separate vertical section where there are barriers separating each vertical section. And four, service disconnects in switch gear or metering centers where each disconnect is located in a separate compartment. They're again not saying it, right? They're saying you need to have one main disconnect in an enclosure but they're not specifically saying you can't have more than one in one enclosure. They just took the language of the more than one in one enclosure language out completely and reworded it. That was basically yours only supposed to have one, but there's the, these other situations that you might be able to have more. Um, now it still says two to six, right? So like there's still the six handle rule essentially, um, but they just took out all of the other language. So that's just to say all of the reading through code. I'm so sorry, guys. I don't like to sit and read code. I'm not one of these code guys, but you got to know this stuff. It's really important to, to at least understand it and to understand that it is very ununderstandable sometimes. So um, that just means the six handle rule is not gone. It's just reworded, moved around and more defined. You can no longer have a enclosure that has multiple different handles within the same enclosure. If you were going to do the six handle rule, you need to take those six handles out of a single enclosure. You can have them in multiple different enclosures um, or, you know, obviously read through B separate enclosures with main service disconnecting means in each enclosure or panel boards with a main service disconnecting means in each panel board enclosure. A lot of times different services will require different things. So another thing that uh, to look at is just in general, the beginning of 230 talks about the number of services. So this is another thing where people kind of get confused because you can have multiple services on a property. You're only supposed to have one, but again, there's some certain weird situations where you might have multiple services. So you might have a situation where you have an MDP where you're turning off several different loads from one place. Um, so in 230, it says number of services a building or other structure served shall be supplied by only one service unless permitted in 230.2A through D. 
So A is special conditions. If you're working with like emergency systems, fire pumps, um, optional standby systems, all of those things. B is special types of occupancies. So you might have a multi-occupancy building where there is no available space for service equipment accessible to all occupants. So you may have two different services run in. Now, this is a little, uh, a little bit different thing. I'm talking about actually the utility company bringing two completely different services over to a building or more of them. Um, Another one, a single building or other structure sufficiently large to make two or more services necessary. Sometimes you'll even see older installs where they've got like a, a duplex or like one building that has two different services going to it. That's a reason why you might have two. Um, another would be capacity requirements. So sometimes you have things that are over 2000 amps. Um, so like splitting multiple services actually makes sense. It's more cost effective than trying to do a 4,000 amp service. Then we have different characteristics. Additional services shall be permitted for different voltages, frequencies, or phases for different uses, uh, such as for different rate schedules. So sometimes you can have a rate schedule for like three phase and a rate schedule for single phase and the rate of, uh, of power is going to cost more for three phase than it is for single phase, or they might be a, a situation why that utility company will provide both because of their rate schedules. Um, and then obviously different voltages too. You might have like uh, different things on a property where you need 480 volt and some things might just need 240 volt. And instead of relying on the one existing service to come in, they just completely keep those voltages separately. Um, it might even be a different voltage. You might be a thousand volts and it might be, you know, 240 volts, but keeping all of those separately, that's another reason you might come up with different services. But everything that we're talking about with the split bus is generally for the same service. So you have one enclosure, you have two different buses. Part of that panel is feeding the same panel and that's not okay anymore. I'm sorry if that was like the most boring video I've ever created because <laughs> it's all code stuff. Uh, but I think it's really important because there's all these people in these forums and Facebook groups and stuff that are like argue. They're like, oh, the six handle rule. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, I understand that's muddy and confusing because they, took language out and then moved other things and then took other language out and reworded it. But no, the idea of having a split bus panel is that it needs to go away, <laughs> really. And on that note, by the way, if you have one of those old legacy systems, you can get brand new breakers. You don't have to be popping the old crap out of those old breakers and trying to reuse it when you're out in the country and nobody's looking. They actually have brand new breakers. These are Pushmatic. They've got Zinsco. We've got Federal Pacific, uh, Challenger. Go to BigElectricSupply.com. There's a link in the description below. Electrician U, if you put that in, um, you get a, a discount on anything that you buy in there. So there's no excuse to be buying that old crap anymore. Buy new stuff. I think that's all I got, my dudes. Thank you so much. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. If you have any other comments, questions below. If you like me doing Code Talk, I'm kind of animated. So maybe, I don't know, maybe you guys like this more or like this less. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> but I love you. So let me know what you guys like. Appreciate all your time. Please make sure that you join the channel membership. Subscribe, at least subscribe. If you watch all these all the time, come on, homeboy, homegirl. Subscribe, show some love. Make sure that you thumbs up, like this video, hit the notification bell, it lets you know uh, every time I have a new episode. And uh, stay classy in San Diego. Best can't use it and video.